All right, guys, welcome to the video. All glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I'm going to talk about five warnings concerning the topic of casting out demons. I know deliverance ministry is getting really popular. It's getting more and more popular. I even seen, I believe, some people that believe in other religions trying to mimic what they see people that are believers in Jesus Christ doing in the field of uh, deliverance. The Bible says, you know, it's, it makes it clear that Satan can't cast out Satan. If he casts out himself, then his kingdom can't stand because he's divided against himself. But there are imitations. There's even imitations at times with Christians that think they could be casting a demon out, but the demon is just imitating and mimicking being cast out so that the person may think it's gone, but it may not actually be gone. So just, just um, something to just take note of. But five warnings, make sure you guys have hit the like button and drop a comment in the comment section if you're viewing this on YouTube. If, if you're seeing this on Patreon, don't worry about it. Uh, but if, you, if you're not on Patreon, make sure you drop that comment in the comment section. So the first warning that I would give about casting out demons is that you shouldn't be talking to them too long, nor should you be excited or desiring to talk to them. Anytime you're in a demon is speaking, it, it has no good intentions towards you. The intention is to try to deceive you. Yes, they are subject to you through the name of Jesus Christ, through your faith in Jesus Christ. They are in subjection to you. However, they are still looking for an angle to attempt to deceive you or trick you if they can. They're looking for an angle that they can get you slipping, cause you to say something you shouldn't say, get you to say something proudful. They're trying to come get you to sin in some way. And, um, you know, it's a very intense thing. So I, I, I just... I say you shouldn't be speaking to them unless it's absolutely necessary. Sometimes you'll attempt to do a deliverance and the demons will start to speak out on their own at that moment. The majority of the time, however, they aren't, they're not talking. Most deliverances that I've done, um, the demons don't talk. They just come right out. Uh, probably maybe 10% of them, if that, there's any talking, maybe 5%, really. And those are always really intense moments and they're, they're heavy and the times that they're talking, norm, the normal deliverance, I go about my day after the deliverance and everything is cool. But in the times when they're talking, that's a very heavy experience. That's a lot more draining. It's not, I wouldn't even recommend it unless, you know, I, I wouldn't recommend it unless you, unless, like I said, sometimes they'll talk out and you'll, you know, you can ask them what they, what, what kind of spirit they are and what, how do they enter this person. And that'll give you clues on how to help cast it out or how to break the bond about which they came into someone. But anything beyond what's necessary for them to be cast out, which is how they came in and um, what type of spirit they are, anything beyond that is unnecessary. They are, they are, Derek Prince calls them people without bodies. And I know exactly what he means because they're, they're people. They're, they're, they have a full personality. They have questions. They're just like a person. Uh, they just don't have this, the, the level of compassion that they've been, you know, that that a human being would have. So I, I just say you, you don't talk to them for too long unless you, anything beyond discovering why they're there and how they came in is unnecessary. There's a scripture in Psalms chapter 131 verse 1 that says, this is, he says, Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor mine eyes lofty, neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Right? And that, 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 that's just a testament to don't go, don't go beyond the limit. Right? We, see, we see the example in the Bible of Jesus when, when the legion cries out and he says, what is your name? He says, I am legion for we are many. And, and so we see that example of Jesus talking to the, the unclean spirit. But the majority of the deliverances you see about that we have written on record, there's not talking happening. Um, talking does happen in deliverance. However, I just say be cautious. Don't, don't answer no questions they're asking you. You don't have to get into a conversation with them. If you're asking anything, it's how they came in and what type of spirit they are. So that, so that they can be driven out. If there's any, sometimes it's still a legal right there that's connected to a sin that hasn't been confessed. So anything beyond that, in my, in my opinion, is, is unnecessary. I have seen stories and, and videos and testimonies of people, pastors or, 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 or just men who have went beyond that point and asking questions and looking for answers. I think that that leans on the side of divination when you begin to look for it. answers from the spirit that, that are not directly to do with the person that's in front of you and how they end that person. That's it. You don't counsel them for knowledge. They, yeah, they know stuff going on about the underworld and all this stuff. That's not, we, if we need, if we need to know something, I believe God will reveal it to us in his appropriate time. Sometimes the demon will blurt out something. Sometimes that can be arranged and, you know, for it to happen that way. But 
we shouldn't be. Don't seek any answers from them, guys. Don't seek any, never seek an answer from a demon. Um, the only thing that is to be asked, in my opinion, from my experience, what's necessary is how they came in and what type of spirit they are so you know how to, how to break the yoke and, and they could be cast out and, and cl closing it into the legal right. That's the warning. They are, I, I've, you know, I, in my past when I was first starting out, I started doing deliverances or even having these experiences. I want, you know, and doing some deliverances before I was even, before I was fully saved. I believed in Jesus Christ. I had spoken in tongues before I had, I had, and I had had these experiences, some of these experiences and took certain people to deliverance. I didn't really know what I was doing, but every once in a, that's, every once in a while, I guess uh, some unclean spirits that are a little wiser and more knowledgeable, that have a little more vision would challenge me on, 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 on the basis of like, they don't have to come out. Right. But, you know, but I, I, I just say that. So sometimes that like, one, one, they'll, they'll try to get people to make deals. I've heard these stories. I had an experience myself. They'll say, I'll come out of this person, but make a deal with me first. They're trying to lure you into sin. Never make a deal. Never don't even ask. Don't even ask what the deal is. Do not be curious. Deception is what they do. Uh, they've been I'm sure some of these beings have been living for years and years and years and years deceiving men from all walks of life men and women from all walks of life just be careful I want to put that out there don't make no deals don't ask no questions don't even answer no questions unless you answer it with straight scripture or something that's scripturally based to as you know as your sword but don't don't get into those those um you know I had a deliverance recently the spirits were saying who do you think you are to cast us out don't even get into that don't even answer that just stick focused stay focused on the task at hand which is driving them out the 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 next warning i would give is keep faith a lot of times when a demon is talking they're trying to do one or two things deceive you or shake your faith get you to sin deceive you or shake your faith they'll pretend at times they don't have to come out but they do they'll put up a front and say you can't cast me out. i don't have to listen to you but a lot of times that's a front that they're putting up to make you think that they don't have to come out but it's a lie it's a deception they do have to come out and but if they can shake your faith and make you think that you don't have the authority to cast them out then perhaps you don't because your faith is being shaken by what they're saying so they're affecting your ability to drive them out by shaking your faith you have to keep faith and know that in the name of jesus christ these things can be cast out if you you know you, you know there are people in the bible there's a guy in the bible where the disciples say uh jesus we saw a man casting out demons in your name and we forbid him because he was not with us so here was a man that wasn't even walking with Jesus. He wasn't even one of the disciples, but he, I'm sure he was following the teachings. But Jesus said, whoever is not for us, is, whoever is not against us is for us. So even this man who wasn't a direct disciple of Jesus Christ, like a directly in, in, in the fashion that his, his 12 disciples were, was driving out demons. You have the seven sons of Sceva who ultimately ran into an issue because they, they weren't truly in the faith uh, but they were doing it successfully up until they ran into a, into an issue, which you know there's there's, there's, there's things of all kind of levels and spectrum. So you got to know what you what you're doing. So I would make sure to caution people about that. Keep faith. Know that they have to come out. Some some deliverances can take five minutes. Some can take hours. But you have to keep faith the whole time and know that through the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says, these signs shall follow those who believe. In my name, they shall cast out demons. You have the authority. You are clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. It is not your own ability. It is not your own power. It is not your own righteousness. Or it is not your own something that makes you able to do it. It is your faith in the righteousness of Jesus Christ that covers you because you believe in him. That is what allows you to drive them out. Not any. So if you think, oh, I don't know if I can do it. Uh, you know, I haven't been reading my Bible this week. Then you're, you're making it about you. You should be reading your Bible. Let's be clear. But however that you're making it about you. The demons are not coming out because of because it's about you. If that was the case, nobody would be able to do it. None of like the Bible says none of us are righteous. Not one. Our righteousness is filthy rags. None, none does right. Right now, you shouldn't be actively in any willful sin because people like you'll run into trouble. However, what I'm saying, it, 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 just as a general principle, if you're repenting and you're not willfully living in sin, uh, you can drive them out through Jesus Christ because it is in him that you do it. It is not in yourself. It is not in yourself. So don't never make, I remember I, I happened to me before I was like, man, I, I, it was a woman that had asked for my help. And um, we had, let's, say, let's say I had an appointment to, 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 to discuss with her at like 5 p.m. At around 12 p.m. I had got into a, a little argument with somebody and I, I probably said something that I, that may have been a little harsh and I was like, man, I, I shouldn't have did that. I repented. I'm like, God, I, I, man, I, I hope I'm going to have success with this deliverance because I shouldn't have, 
because I said that I was, you know, I, I, I messed up with this person. I hope I have success. And it's like, no, I mean, it's not about me. It's not about my errors and my faults. I, refe- I confessed and brought my sin under the blood of Jesus Christ, but it's not about me. If it was about me, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It's about who Jesus Christ is. It's because who he is that they come out, not because who you are, what you've done, where you've been, what you might be thinking. You know, don't just, just always try to keep watching that. Sometimes in the middle of deliverance, sometimes a spirits around you will come try to whisper to try to try to knock you off track and make you think things that oh I can't do this what about this maybe this you know always just keep faith and know that they have to come out in the name of Jesus Christ continue to push forward uh the third warning I want to give I mentioned this before but I want to mention again because I've seen a video recently of somebody else doing this is that one guys stop praying to angels I'm going to do another a video about that more extensively we don't pray to angels we pray to God in the name of Jesus Christ we do not have the authority or the power to command angels. Is even in the scripture in the Bible where Jesus says, don't you know that I can ask my father and he will send angels? So Jesus said he will ask the father and the father will send the angels. I see this doctrine going around that, that people have the ability to command and, and, and order around and, and pray and ask for angels to help them. Like that is not scriptural. And, and I, I've seen, um, I mean, you, I don't see any example of that in scripture anywhere, right? I, I've even seen, um, a video of a guy doing that and the, the woman was manifesting the demon wouldn't come out and he called on an angel and, and it's in the woman like flew back or she had a reaction to him saying that i think this is my opinion here that that's a part of the deception that they know like all right what this person is doing is anti-scriptural and they're not supposed to do that so they, let's just say they have a meeting and say like anytime somebody calls on an angel pretend you came out because that'll help create this doctrine about people calling on angels that once people see it's effective there are more people will begin to think that it must be the right thing to do and thus put themselves in sin so it'll in reacting to something like that it'll help create and spread a false doctrine so we have to have wisdom we have to use wisdom just because you may get a react i remember i used to when i when i first started doing deliverances i would call or pray that fire would come and burn the unclean spirits that I was, I would pray that fire would come and burn them. And they would be reacting. They would be burning. They would be having a reaction like they were burning. And, and, and who knows if they were burning or not. It, I found out that I was wrong and I got wounded from doing that. And I had to repent in the name of Jesus for that. Because nowhere in the Bible do you see anyone doing that. You see Jesus driving them out. They ask Jesus, have you come to torment us before our time? Right? It, it's not that time. And we're not their tormentors. And, and it's not their time. It's not, it's not their time. Right. So I just say use wisdom because they used to react like, ah, they will be screaming and moving around like they're being burned. And maybe they were, maybe they weren't. But the point is, in them reacting, it didn't matter whether they were or weren't. It empowered me to feel like, oh, OK, this is working. Right. I used to think if I if I if I call down fire, they would get uncomfortable and want to leave. But it's like, you know, but no, they would they would endure that because they would know that the, I'm sinning. And as, if they endure me sinning. The door is open for me to be wounded and attack myself. So what I, if you don't see an example of somebody doing it in scripture, please, 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 please just steer caution. If you feel like God has given you some super revelation, take it to scripture. I don't, you know, take it to scripture, man. But um, I think that's how false doctrines are created, man. That's just my opinion for the, from what I can see that they'll react intentionally. So they already have control over the person. They're talking out of the person's mouth. They'll react so that you can be deceived into thinking that this is effective because you'll spread that doctrine to more people and lure, lure, lure more people into, into other doctrines and things that are not true. So I say be careful with that. If you, you know, there's no example of it in the Bible, so none. Uh, the, 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 the fourth warning I want to give is that sometimes a demon will say, where do I go? Or, this used to happen to me in the past. And I, I was inexperienced, so I didn't know any better. And you see people, I see people on, on, on stage, on, on not stage, uh, pastors and preachers, people doing deliverances and the demons saying, where do I go? And they're sending them to the pit. Sometimes they say, send them to, the, I'm sending them to the judgment seat. They, they, all of these things, none of this is in scripture. I was actually watching Derek Prince and he, I, I agreed with him on this because I felt the same way is that we don't see any examples of, of this. And as he says, it's foolishness to think that you're, we cast them out. They're still free to roam around and, and, and they have a time to do what they do. Like we're not their judges, we're not the executioners. We, but we're told to cast them out, and that's that's the extent of our responsibility, right? To cat to drive them out, 
to make sure that believers are free from them, that they're, 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 they're no longer in bondage to them, to drive them out. We're not given any other responsibility. We're not told to call down fire. We're not told to send them to the pit. We're not told to send them to judgment. We're not told to appear before the courts of heaven. We're not told to do these things. You know, God can hear us just fine. God sees all and hears all. In the name of Jesus Christ, when we pray, pray and come to the Father and approach the throne of grace, he can hear us perfectly well. He is God Almighty, sovereign and holy, hears all and sees all. He can hear us just fine. He can hear us all just fine. So sometimes when the demon is there saying, oh, where do, you, where do we go? Where, where, where are you going to send us to? You see the example of them saying, can they go into the pigs and stuff like that with the Lord? Um, so I guess some people may use that as a reference. But we don't see them, nobody sending them to hell or sending them to the pit. And it's not that it, you, somebody may not be able to do it. That's, that's where people get, sometimes people have to be careful because something may be effective doesn't mean that you're supposed to do it. Like there could be a reaction from you doing, like you could have a, what seems to be success on the front end, but on the back end, there could be a reaction onto you for doing something that you're not supposed to do. And it may not come right away. Right. It may not come right away, but when we're operating outside of our bounds, things that's outside of bounds can, you know, once you cross the line, there's things over that line that you don't we don't really want to have anything to do with. So always stay in bounds, stay on the inside of the line. If you don't see it in Scripture, drive them out, cast them out. That's it. If you don't see it in Scripture, it ain't. if they say, where do I go? You just go out. You have to come out. You have to go out of here in Jesus name. That's it. That's not your responsibility where they go. That's, you're not there. You're not, you don't, you know, that's not your job. They go out in the name of Jesus. The last is probably the most important. If you're new into deliverance or you're having successful deliverances, uh, it's important to stay humble. Stay humble, stay humble, stay humble. There's a, there's a scripture in the Bible where the, the, the disciples return to Jesus after they go out and they're healing the sick and, dri and driving out spirits. They say, and they come back and say, Jesus, wow. Even the demons submit to us in, our, in your name. And he says, we do not rejoice. You do not, re don't rejoice that the demons submit to you, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. This is, um, this is all for the glory of God through the Lord Jesus Christ. This is not for our own personal glory. And I know it, it's, it's, it's in, in seeing it be effective, it's sometimes, you know, it, you can feel excited. And I've, I've experienced that, like, wow, it's working. Wow, this is happening. Wow, they're coming out. Like, like the, like, like the uh, disciples were, wow, even the demons submit to us in your name. Uh, but rejoice that your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, not the demon submit to you. It's not, it is not our power. It's not our authority. It is the authority that we receive through Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. He's the ruler. He is king. He is supreme ruler of the heavens, the earth, the seas, and all that's in them. He is King of kings and, and Lord of lords. It is, it, is, it is in him that these things happen, not in us, not because of us. Um, we're, we're branches attached to the vine but apart from the vine we can do nothing as the lord jesus christ said so i just say stay humble and give god the glory always i tell people all the time after deliverances it's not that they can't say thank you for me you know spending time and investing them but i always say man glory to god through the lord jesus christ because i, I said you don't if somebody builds you a house you don't pick up their hammer and say thank you to the hammer you you tell you you tell the builder thank you um you know you thank the builder you're grateful for the hammer that the hammer was allowed, they had a hammer to help, you know, you're grateful that the hammer was able to be used to, to build your house, but the builder, the, the author, the creator, that's who you give the, the, the true thanks and praise to, the, the, God, of, the, the, the God that loves you, that, uh, you know, that wants us free, that loves us, that wants us to come to him through Jesus Christ. He's the builder, he's the author, he's the creator, and you give him the glory through the Lord Jesus Christ. We don't really, you know, you can say thanks and not, you know, I, I'm going to say glory to God in Jesus' name, for he's the builder. I'm a hammer. I'm a tool used. I was a tool used to assist the process, but it's all glory to God in Jesus' name. So that's just the main things I want to touch on. Just, just as this is getting popular, and uh, we just got to be careful, guys. That's all. It's just, just stick to scripture. We've been given this scripture for a reason. You know, don't really step out of bounds of what you don't see examples of people doing in scripture. So that's it, guys. Uh, my three-hour class, uh, class number nine, King Solomon, the wisest man, is in the works. It should be available sometime this coming week. I'm going to be discussing you know, the writings of Solomon, the story of Solomon, Proverbs, and a couple things that I found very interesting in detail. So make sure you guys are, for the Diamond members, you're a part of that to be able to hear that. And I think that's it, guys. I think that's it. Oh, one last you know, thing. One last thing. You don't need any special anointing 
to do deliverance, you just need faith. Faith knowing that the power, the power of Jesus Christ of Nazareth and what he did on the cross allows you to walk, uh, to be cleansed of your sins. The Bible says that for he who knew no sin became sin, that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, if you're in Christ, you can do it. You just got to have faith. Don't talk to the person when you do deliverance. Talk to the spirits and command them to come out. You know, command them to come out. When you start commanding them, if, if you don't see too much reaction, ask the person how you feel. Sometimes people won't tell you. And if they say, oh, I feel something in my stomach moving. All right, that, that, keep going now, you know. But that's it, guys. I just wanted to make sure I bring that to everybody's attention. Peace, guys. All glory, honor, and praise to my Father in heaven through the Lord Jesus Christ. I appreciate everybody that continue to support. And uh, the support really helps. Uh, and I appreciate every, everybody still supporting and, and watching the content. Uh, peace, guys. Peace, 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 guys.